Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are Team 5. It's Nick, Nicholas Gimble, Kern Wilson, myself, Ricardo Urbina, and uh, we made a mobile platform robot. And these are the division of the responsibilities in the project. Uh, Nick basically did most of the programming and debugging. Nate, uh, Kern worked on the testing and videography and part of the PowerPoint, as always he has a way of putting it together. And I did the construction and maintenance for the robot. And uh, basically the robot is to, we had to create a fully autonomous, fault-tolerant, omnidirectional robotic platform that will map a given area. <laughs> Tongue twister. <laughs> and uh, basically fault tolerant means that if, uh, if a given component on the robot fails, it still has other components to rely on and it'll keep doing its, uh, the same operations. And uh, omni or di omnidirectional is basically the wheels provide movement, which it doesn't have to change uh, the actual orientation of the robot. It could go one way and just travel in a different, but in a different direction without changing the orientation. And uh, these are some of the challenges that we faced in this project, which are maneuverability, uh, rot what is it? rotation, <laughs> obstacle detection, if efficient <laughs> mapping of the, of the given area, the material selected, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and the uh, power distribution. <laughs> oh my god. Right now, I'm going to speak about the design concept. Basically, we had three design concepts. Um, the octagonal design, we had the square design, and we also had the triangular design. The octagonal design was easy and makes easy turns. Um, it's sturdy, and it provides protection for the sensors. Um, the square design, as I said, is strong, simple, easy design. Um, the triangle one is very compact, um, agile, and lightweight. Next couple of sides. Um, here we see we have the octagonal design. You can see the no depositioning of the wheels. These are the omnidirectional wheels that he was speaking about with the rollers which are able to move in any direction. Um, here we have the square, basic square design, a square robot, four wheels on it on either side. Um, next one, we have the triangular one which is very compact. Um, you see the sensors placed on the top. Uh, next slide please. Thank you. Selection of design. Basically, we chose the second. We went with the second one, which is a square-based design. Um, we went with the square design because of it's made of a strong material, um, outer casing to provide protection to the parts. Um, we use silver motors, omni wheels for mobility. Um, basically, this is wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, basically, for our own we didn't. Our, we chose, um, we created all the materials from scratch. Uh, we built a basic robot from scratch. As you can see from the uh, robot in front there, we used plexi, plexiglass of, um, let's see, a thickness, what, 0.22 thick thickness. Um, next slide. Uh, with mobility parts with several motors, the omni wheels, which we spoke about again, allowing 360 degrees of motion. This is a part actually rolls. When, uh, when the wheels roll, these actually rolls, like little rollers. Uh, sensors, everyone spoke about it, everyone used these sensors, the same sensors everyone used. Um, infrared sensors and ultrasonic sensors. Um, here we come to my best part, is, which is the actual robot. Um, this is the outer casing that we, we constructed, out of plexi, um, put together by L brackets and stuff like that. Uh, we also had the top of the platform, um, where the ultra sensors in, in our own, um, the ultra sensors are on top of the platform, as in, in not shown in this SolidWorks model, and also that we have the bottom platform where the wheels were mounted onto. Now I'm going to hand over to Nick, who's going to speak about software development. Okay, um, really briefly, the software, I uh, wasn't going to put a flowchart on here, it was too intertwining and, and too complex, at least for, for me, so uh, I'm not going to, you know, I wasn't going to put that on there, but basically what it does is it maps the room from right, from right, from the right-hand side and works all the way around using forward as it's, uh, as it's pretty much its main um, direction. It always aims forward. Um, it'll, it'll avoid open spaces. It'll try to do its best to stay along the perimeter of a wall. Um, unfortunately, because one of my lab mates decided to burn out four of our sensors, uh, we, we had to change the design a little bit. So um, it's, it doesn't have a changing level of priority. The front level, the front level and, and the left is always the priority on the robot, as you'll see in the video later. Um, and the, the, next, the next thing we didn't anticipate until after we ran it was after you made a left-hand turn, uh, all surfaces aren't always the same. 
So you might overturn or you might underturn. So we had to, I had to develop a calibration um, system, which you'll see on the videos, where the robot will actually square itself off uh, along the wall. Okay, um, when we tested it, first we tested each individual component. We couldn't test our infrared sensors because our infrared sensors are not the ones that comes with the robot kit. We uh, had to buy separate ones, and those require A to D converters, uh, which we did not have access to and or money to buy. Um, the ultrasonic sensors we went ahead and tested individually on the board, and the servos we went ahead and tested individually on the board before we uh, put the robot together. All right, um, we, we did a number of trials just like everybody else. Uh, the first one, all the wheels couldn't grip because it was not level, um, so we had to disassemble it and reassemble it, leveling out all the wheels. Uh, the second trial, we... Um, the, pro the robot kept moving forward instead of sensing the walls because there was an error in the, in the, logic, uh, the logical progression of the programming. Um, the third trial, uh, it over-rotated on turns, um, which, which w what it would do is it would over-rotate and then run into a wall, which is fine because our, our uh, design is to prevent from hitting any foreign obstacles, but it didn't, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. And then the last trial, which is trial four to forever because we didn't have time to fix the wheels, um, the wheels slipped. Because of they're a little worn out, and because of uh, because they don't completely grip the ground, they'll slip, and it's not going to move as well as it should. Okay, this is uh, the final constructed platform. Like we had mentioned before, um, this is custom made as well. Uh, we we, worked, we did it in the shop. We create, got bought some plexiglass and, and created it in the shop. We had to use just four ultrasonic sensors because the other four burnt out, and the IRs uh, required ADD converters, which we didn't have. Um, so this is our final design. Okay, some modifications, like I said, we only use four sensors, two in the front, two in the left. Um, the programming logic, instead of you working from all sides, our robot turns so that the front, which is this, this being the front, is always facing in the direction of travel. And then the actual uh, construction of the robot, the location of the sensors, as you saw in the earlier SOLIDWORKS model. Um, we couldn't animate it for you because there are too many degrees of freedom on this robot, but um, the, sen the ultrasonic sensors were on the bottom. We had to put them to the top since they're the only sensors we could work with. Okay, and this is a brief uh, video of our robot in action. As you can see, it'll move towards the wall. Once it senses the wall, it's going to see the wheel slipping. It's going to move away from the wall, continue along the perimeter. Once both left-hand sensors get out, uh, see an open space, the robot's going to make a left-hand turn. The wheel's still slipping, as you can see. And then it's going to move forward a little bit, and now it's going to calibrate itself. It's going to square off the two left-hand sensors, and then it's going to move closer to the wall to a distance we designated. It got, it got stuck on the little uh, ramp in between the hallways, so I had to give a little nudge. And then what happens is within the program, which is something that we had to add also, the, pro the robot checks to see if maybe the wall is curving away or towards the robot, and if it gets too close, it will recalibrate itself again. See right here, it's going to calibrate itself, which it does. Now it's square. It sees the the two little door stops, so it's going to move away from them, turn again, and calibrate and find the wall again. And once it gets to the wall, once it, this is that, that check I was, going to t I was telling you about, once it sees the wall at a certain distance that we program it in, it's going to move along the wall. Once it gets too close, it's going to recalibrate itself like it's doing right there, so that it's square up flush against the wall. And here's another. This this is a uh, our final trial, which you can you'll see the wheel slip after it, it calibrates itself. What we'll do is it'll, it's it's too close to the wall, so it's going to push away from the wall. Right there, and then see the wheel slipping. Not because the batteries were dead, but because they, they couldn't catch again even against the rug. And same thing here. It's going to move towards the wall, and it's going to keep moving away. All right, uh, conclusion, uh, we, it would be better if we would have backup sensors on the robot just so that it could have you know, something else to fall back on in case it does get stuck. Uh, we need stronger rotating uh, servos just because they, they move too slow with the, with the given uh, robot design that we have and a uh, bigger battery so they could run longer because when we were testing it, we, were all, we would only run it for like maybe five, ten minutes at most and the batteries will start dying out and it would move even slower. And uh, some recommendations and improvements. Uh, better, bigger board, uh, some AD converters, just so we could operate the, the infrared 
uh, sensors that we had in mind to, to put in the design. Uh, stronger uh, sensors for, for the robot.